Whoa, cool. Yeah, perfect. I gotta learn more about this. Okay. <laughs> I gotta stream my life. Okay. Are you? Are, are we live now? We are almost basically. Okay. Uh, yeah. We are. Okay. Ah. Mm. Hello, everyone. <laughs> This is Winsolation. We are very happy to have you, everyone here joining us today. And uh, we just want to remember you that um, self-isolation doesn't need to be challenging. And uh, it can be an opportunity for us to connect digitally uh, with our friends, our families, and our networks. And uh, also to spend more time doing things that we love, developing new interests and learning new skills. So <laughs> this is Resolution. We gather together, we invite very good people to teach us new skills. Uh, so if you have a skill, just write to us and uh, you can join us one day. Or if you want to learn something, um, and you can propose a topic. So just send us messages, and we will find a lovely human to teach us how to do it. So we have today Ivan from my sal, <laughs> uh, Adriana, Tony, and Lynn. And um, before we jump with you, Ivan. Um, I'm gonna do a land acknowledgement. And I wanted to share with you that um, when we decided to do a land acknowledgement, maybe you are in Toronto, maybe you are in Canada, but maybe you are not in Canada and you're watching us. Uh, for me, even the name of land acknowledgement when I arrived to, <clears throat> to Canada, it was a very strange and foreign um, um, title, word. And I didn't know what, what a land acknowledgement was. Um, but I was seeing everyone just repeating the same uh, statement before every event. Uh, so I started to realize that uh, people were just acknowledging that uh, this land was belonging to someone else before. Uh, but for today, uh, I wanted to tell you what what's the story behind the land acknowledgement in Canada. And uh, it was everything, everything started because of the reconciliation of settlers and uh, uh, First Nations. The First Nations are Aborigines um, people. I don't even like the word of Aborigines. Uh, and it's just because, uh, well, we have two Mexicans today <laughs> in the forum. And I don't know about you, Ivan, but uh, for me, mm, when they call Aborigines the Aztecs or the Mayans in Mexico, I don't feel that it's a word that defines uh, the cultural heritage of, uh, of a nation. So I like the, the uh, I like First Nations as, uh, as the name of Aborigines in Canada. And I also want to recognize that when I arrived to Canada, I didn't know anything about uh, original or native people um, in Canada. Uh, I, I ignored that there were so many tribes still uh, alive. And I wanted to share a little bit about the cultural genocide that happened. These are not my words. Uh, and I think uh, sometimes we, we try to uh, raise awareness uh, with our words, uh, but this is very special and, and specific because I think the people that need to share their story, it's them, not us. And uh, this is, um, the, from the protocols, uh, of <clears throat> it's uh, the protocols and pathways uh, that needs to be used uh, working with First Nations. 
Metis and Inuit communities, cultures and concepts and stories. And uh, I'm gonna just share a little paragraph uh, of this that I found it very lovely. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm just gonna share it. In Canada, the process of colonization has had a profound and lasting impact on Aboriginal peoples. Their land, their languages, their cultures, and the art practices. Today, many artists consider contemporary art practices to be a process of decolonization, reappropriation, reclaiming, and healing. And I'm sharing it because I, I am also an indigenous uh, person uh, from Mexico. And uh, mm, colonization, it's uh, something that we talk a lot and it's very common and we all already know what is it, but we never talk about the cultural genocide uh, that we had. So um, just wanted to, to share it and to, to express it. And <laughs> Yeah, so I wanted to also share uh, a name of a very beautiful documentary that I love. And it's uh, Inuit people sharing their stories from their perspective. And it's called the Angry In Inuit. I'm gonna write it on the, um, on the comments. Uh, so you can watch it if you have time. And uh, I, I love the way they are sharing their perspective on that uh, documentary. And, well, <laughs> um, I think uh, the past is nothing if we don't just take it uh, to look forward. And I think uh, all the pain and suffering of so many people, uh, it's, it happens for a reason. We learn it and we just need to move forward. So we just need to be very mindful of our acts and the impact of them. Agreed. Ah, yes, tell me. <laughs> yes. Um, we have Ivan today with us. And uh, he, he is running Maisal and Libertad, uh, very special uh, places in, in Toronto. And it's because they are trying to adopt zero waste practices and they are doing uh, a circular economy in the restaurant, uh, a concept that is uh, very, with a very elegant solution. Ta table, farms to table, table to farm. Just closing that loop. And uh, here is with us Ivan today. Hey Ivan, you want to tell us a little bit more about how you guys accomplish zero food waste in your restaurant and tortilla? <clears throat> yeah, um, so we we essentially um, or I essentially started to learn a lot about farming and as I started working in farming, started composting just because it's part of the gig <laughs> when you're in rural Ontario or rural anywhere planet earth I think to the be best of my knowledge um, so composting started to become just a thing that became uh, a habit to me like brushing your teeth or like throwing out garbage at home or like eating cook you know just became kind of like something you didn't think about um, so I even began feeling a, um, a separation from um, living like that sometimes in, in, on the farm. And then in the city, because I, I reside in the city, um, you know, bagging it up and putting it in a green bin that gets carried away by some people. And then I just kind of confided 
that they do as diligent a job as many farmers do and people in rural communities. And um, that, to be fairly honest, I'm not sure. I've heard different things, but it, it, I've heard that it's not so true, that they don't do a diligent job and that it's a bit of a, bit of a question mark of what happens to um, our, I'm speaking about our organic waste, so the green bin in Toronto, because I just, I realized Erika mentioned that people could be watching from anywhere in the world. So here in Toronto, we throw our organic waste into a green bin that gets picked up by the city um, for residents at least, and then gets sent supposedly to a compost facility. Um, so I started to feel a big separation from that and, and a bit weird. And I'm sure many people who have a green thumb or a gardening or are part of community gardens in Toronto or have or come from small towns or rural communities, I'm sure they probably feel the same way um, or might even take things into their own hands and um, even make their own compost. Um, some people I know, a lot of people in my network make uh, vermicompost, which is using worms and it's very simple to do in a kitchen. Yeah. Or a Sorry? No, Sophie does that. We just actually had a YouTube live about that. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. We do that at the Tortilleria. I do that at home. And uh, yeah, I'm actually house sitting and I'm pretty proud. The house that I'm, I'm house sitting for a friend's place. And they have a huge compost um, bin set up in the backyard that I'm turning all the time. And anyway, so there's all kinds of individuals out here. Uh, my take on that was that I started to incorporate our restaurant before into that system of just hauling up um, all of the organic waste. So we up to the farm and we just started to not even use our green bin uh, except for paper liners and, and uh, napkins. And I was doing that, not really thinking too much beyond beyond just that that was the right thing to do and it made more sense because I was going up to the farm anyway. Um, and and make, I think uh, when you learn a lot about composting, like making your own compost is actually kind of creating your own richness in a way. Um, so, Ivan, I yeah. also think that you have a very beautiful privilege because you are able to, to, to see the farm, to, to plant the, the seed, to, to see the corn grow um, and then seal the whole process of the corn. Like not just like cultivating the um, farming, the, the corn, but also pr uh, producing tortillas from scratch, homemade, uh, in-house. <laughs> yeah. And okay. also you also had this um, uh, perspective of the end of the life of the tortilla and all the ingredients in the restaurant. And I think that allowed you also to to close this loop to say, well, uh, this food can also nourish the next uh, generation of, uh, of corn or the next, um, how do you call it, guys? <laughs> Plantation? <laughs> yeah, cultivation. Yeah. Um, I mean, whew, we could go into a lot, a lot of subtopics and a lot of, um, but that's true. Uh, it is a privilege and I'm pretty happy to be, I mean, it's, it's, it's doable in this small scale and I'm not sure how things can scale up. That's kind of some of my questions um, of being in the circular economy working group, trying to understand how things could grow because they can't grow on, on my blood, sweat and tears and, you know, my, 18 hours a day that sometimes I give, I already kind of reached my limit in capacity. So for things to grow, it has to be community um, network, support systems, etc. But for now it's doable on a very small scale. And you're, you're right. Uh, actually yesterday, somebody phoned us in on a Zoom interview from the Netherlands to understand what we were doing, which was really cool. And they said that they've um, gone about investigating circular economies and found very little um, places doing something like this where they mostly come across places that are involved with one aspect of like a circular loop or 
maybe a couple, but not every single one. And totally a privilege and totally a lot of hard work and totally under undervalued sometimes uh, what it is to be doing this. So yeah, proud of that and happy. And that- We are also proud and very happy to, yeah. to know you and to have your amazing products here in Toronto. Yeah, so that, that was the food waste, how we got into that. And uh, yeah, we'll keep it. Do we'll keep doing it. Um, I'm still learning about social media and live on YouTube's and Zooms. <laughs> it's very powerful to use tools like this to share this. That's actually how we started doing it. A customer told me once they learned that we were composting, they told me you gotta start posting that and sharing that. And you know, we were making food, we were growing food. I never really cared about sharing the story, and now we've learned the power of sharing the story and going to one of Erica's um, comments about sometimes um, First Nations and, and um, you know, loss of culture and heritage. Sometimes it's important for a culture to share their own story instead of having it told by others too. And I find that really particularly important now in my location, Toronto, where Mexican food and gastronomy and, and uh, culture is sometimes kind of appropriated or, or yeah, just told by others worldwide even. So proud and happy to, to be um, sharing it, but from, from you know, our, our kind of humble perspective. I love and that. I actually love it, uh, Ivan. I'm actually, I'm a very proud Mexican. <laughs> of uh, your tortillas and your food because are very authentic and uh, it is true that stories are not just um, words but also those stories and those uh, and the culture is being transmitted uh, by food and you are transmitting our culture by by creating those amazing tortillas that even when it seems like very simple and easy Ivan is following the ancestor, like, <laughs> uh, he, he's following the old way Aztecs were, um, the process that Aztecs were taking to produce uh, tortillas. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. I love it. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm yeah. so excited. So, um, some of you grabbed masa from us yesterday. And for those who didn't, uh, it's still interesting to watch this, follow along. Um, maybe it'll prompt you to um, pick some up at some point in the future. And I'm pretty shy about all this stuff. And don't, like, I don't even want to endorse <laughs> our masa, the best rate, like, pick, there's other people that make masa, or, I mean, Erica's right, there's also, um, corn flour that you can pick up, kind of more instant, and that's viable. I am not a huge promoter of that for a bunch of um, environmental and political reasons. Tell, tell us why, uh, Ivan, because that's very interesting also for me. I know I don't know everything behind, but I, I am using today uh, maseca, but it's a flour, flour, yeah. I, I'll probably get into that at the end. We can maybe, I mean, again, I've never really guided anything like this, but maybe we can start making and at the end or, or during some questions we raised or afterwards, people might have things to discuss. Um, yeah, that's a very good idea. But for <laughs> now, if everybody has, for everybody who is in their tortilla, has their masa in a bowl. Um, mine, is, mine is the same as, as yours. Um, well, it was ground yesterday, so it's already in uh, going to one day of a slight fermentation. Um, so it won't actually smell the same as yesterday, and it won't have the same moist, fresh, and even warm uh, consistency because it has, once it's ground fresh, it's actually uh, quite warm just because of the friction of uh, two stones grinding, grinding the corn up. 
So I mean, what's the best way to store your masa when you pick it up and bring it home? The best way is in the fridge. Okay. Yeah. And cool. right off the bat, I'll get into something that's fresh. This is a great opportunity for me to bring up something I've wanted to bring up for a long time uh, and never do. So people who now are becoming more and more sourdough makers or hopefully tortilla makers, a really good method to kind of reactivate your masa, um, it's not necessary. And, I, and by no means do you have to do this when you buy our masa, especially not even the next day. But um, I really encourage it even for chefs. If there's any chef who uses masa in Toronto or anywhere in the world right now who's watching this video, um, a good way to uh, reactivate it is by using a little bit of lime. Uh, this is cal, uh, so it's calcium hydroxide. Um, and we actually use this when we boil the dry corn. When we're boiling the dry kernels, uh, the day before we grind it into masa, we add a bit of this, the lime, and that's what actually um, breaks the hull of the kernel and makes the corn um, nutrients accessible by the human body because I won't get into this, but people who eat corn on the cob, it kind of, the way it goes in is kind of how it comes out. Um, so you actually, it actually offers little nutrients when we're eating corn on the cob. Whereas when we um, use the lime to break down the hull and, and access um, everything that's packed into the kernel because these kernels are actually a seed. That's probably one of the coolest things or best things for anybody to take away from this is that what you're eating is a seed. And many of us know seeds are very um, enriching. Um, they're packed with a lot of energy. They are um, made that way by nature because they're going to give life eventually. Um, so we're eating seeds. Um, anyway, Nobody has this, and I'm not going to use it right now, but if I wanted to, I could add a little bit of this, especially if it's beyond a few days. So right now, we're not going to do that. Um, I have my water, just a little bit of water. Quick question? Yeah. All right. Where would one find that? Where would one um, find the lime? Like, is that something that's kind of easily accessible? I don't know. <laughs> It is, uh, you might be able to get it in Kensington, I'm fairly sure. Or I, we're going to start to have some available in, in like these little sizes when people pick up masa. Because now that people are becoming very interested in masa, it might be worth it to know how, how, it's, um, how it's used. Um, so I spent a lot of time in, in Michoacan in Mexico. And that's where I learned a lot about um, this. And that's what they always use to uh, put back into the, into the tortilla, into the masa when, when, you, when you've had it for a few days. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ivan, but uh, mm, it's part of the nixtamalization, the process that uh, Aztecs were using to, to produce the tortillas, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When you add the lime and you're boiling the dry cor corn, uh, what you're making is called nixtamal. So we use that, some, that word sometimes in our um, messaging and whatnot. Um, but we're trying to use it in an educative way too, because some people just use it for the sake of throwing it out there and don't really explain what it means or even know what it means. So water and masa. Uh, we're just going to get straight into kneading. So we want to, um, basically, you can either pour a bit of water like this, um, or just keep moistening your hands as you're kneading. But we want to just 
knead the dough, the masa, uh, for a few minutes. And you wanna try and get it into a Play-Doh consistency. It won't be too, um, too challenging because like, like I said, we've only, it's only been uh, a day since this was ground. So yeah, I do a little bit of punching. This is also a good way to release stress. Anybody stressed during quarantine or not in quarantine? Remember those things that frustrated you during the day? <laughs> yeah. And it's good to be just slightly moistening your hands and adding it in um, because it can be a little bit trickier if you over hydrate the masa. <laughs> This I is think cool. a good first time I've done this on a video. <laughs> so kind of fun to see how everybody else <laughs> does this. How are you feeling, guys, <laughs> doing it? <laughs> you know, I'm uh, enjoying the texture, but I like I'm sitting here like, I don't know if it's overhydrated. Is this overhydrated? <laughs> I, I will say that the good roll up tombs, uh, correct me, Ivan, Ivan, but it's uh, um, it doesn't uh, stick on your hands. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, you are dry. Yeah. Yeah, even I guess underhydrating is would be better right now than overhydrating, and if you can see here, basically, if it was overhydrated. I'd have much more of a mass and stickier. There'd be more pieces of masa sticking to the bowl. So nice. And I'm just trying, and and I'd have more, I'd have more, like trickle, uh, drops of water maybe in there. But all the water, I'm just trying to have it absorbed into the masa. So, literally, this is probably based on time. Again, it's hard for me to uh, judge by video or not feeling it myself. But we wanna get it to Play-Doh. If everybody grew up with Play-Doh, it should be like a nice Play-Doh, not like a dry old Play-Doh. Should be like the fresh one that you just popped open out of the little yellow. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, I was having that on my mind. Um, but also like I'm showing it right now on the camera. So you kind of, uh, whenever you put your finger there, it's soft and your finger comes clean actually, like, yeah. Yeah, another thing that, um, that we, you would have noticed probably is at the beginning, it broke easier and now it's more of a unified piece. Like it doesn't break dry anymore now. Plato, for lack of a better word. Um, so don't not no need to go too crazy into this. I feel like that's been a few good minutes of kneading. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> I'll do it um, with a rolling pin. But some people have a press, and it's also a fun way to make tortillas. Um, I decided to use a rolling pin for today because it's probably what more people have uh, at home. It's more accessible too, and it's fun. Um, so you can use um, parchment paper or wax paper, I believe. Uh, I just cut two Ziploc, sorry, I cut a Ziploc bag and used the two sheets from the Ziploc. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, and I, for me, that's that's the one that I use the most. Kind of reuse it. You can just wash this. Don't throw these out after. Obviously, if you throw these out, then you shouldn't be in this in this Zoom meeting. <laughs> and in Mexico, actually, uh, people does it also with their hands only. So yeah. they press one in one side, they press in the other side, 
they turn it, they turn it. I can do it. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's going horrible. But I think uh, uh, yeah. we just need to lose uh, this little um, uh, fear of, uh, of destroying it. You cannot destroy masa, so play with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I also didn't want to get into that either because that takes a lot of practice. But you can, you can just make it with your hands and then make a nice tortilla um, just by hand, no, no paper involved, no plastic, no surface. Um, we might start doing pupusas, which are like gorditas really soon. And, for, and maybe do videos to or show people. But basically for the, for the pupusas, you got to make a thicker tortilla, but it's all hands. Anyway, um, let's, yeah. all get, let's all get a little piece of masa um, out of the bowl. Um, no particular size, maybe like aim for a little bit bigger than a golf ball. So grab your golf ball, fill it up, roll it in your hands a bit. It shouldn't, like Erika said, it shouldn't, it shouldn't stick to your hands um, and it shouldn't crumble. If, obviously, it's not crumbling. If it gets too, too dry, like left out, or if it's been many days, then rehydrating it and kneading it takes a lot more time. So we're going to get the golf ball and place it on one of the sheets of plastic. And then we are going to place the other one on top. And I probably didn't explain this, but it's a good, this is a good system for me. It's just getting something to, to flatten it. In the beginning, if you don't have anything, don't worry. It's just something to like press it down initially. And then Roll it out. We don't want to make it so flat that it creates, um, we don't want to make it so flat that it separates the, the masa. We want to keep it, start giving it the shape of a tortilla. Um, so don't go crazy on flatness. In fact, the thick there's nothing wrong with a thick tortilla. Um, the flatter you can get it, I think, comes with practice. And right and now I think we're you have to put uh, uh, another uh, paper sheet uh, above so it doesn't uh, stick. So yeah, I could see you lean. <laughs> Yeah, the yes, I think I said that that it was the sheet at the bottom and then the golf ball and then the sheet on the top. So if every once everybody's rolled out their tortilla, sh show them to the camera. <laughs> I tried to use a stasher bag, which is silicone. I thought it would work, but it didn't. Either the consistency of my masa is too something or not an ideal thing. I so. have to say, Sophie, that um, my my plastic sheets have yeah. with me about five or six years. Yeah. So, but they are kind of uh, very thin, and I think that's why Ivan used uh, Ziploc uh, plastic because I don't know if that's making any um, influence, Ivan? I broke up the bag that the masa came in, so I'll use that. Yeah, that one should be fine. Um, maybe aim for not, make, not rolling it out so much. Because okay. I, don't, I can't see the consistency being like too hydrated. Oh, oh um, like it looks. I thought it was too much water, but I don't know. Oh, nope. Lena. No, that looks fine. Yeah, it's cute. Okay. I don't know that if looks it's fine. Too. Okay. 
maybe if you have a backup something else similar just to test yeah. test the variable if yeah okay. else, try testing it with something else okay i want to show mine just to show everybody that nobody nobody's perfect mine looks like a rhombus or i don't know a parallelogram <laughs> <laughs> And I think that's the beauty of tortillas, that they are oh, unique. So yeah. every single tortilla is different. And exactly. yeah, like us. <laughs> Those of us who... That's cute, Sophie. <laughs> Let's just oh. give it with an animal shape for Nyla. <laughs> oh. So, An elephant shape? We also want to get our heat going um, to like a medium uh, heat. So I'll, I'm going to turn on my pan, uh, sorry, the stove, and just start warming up the pan because we're going to cook this right away. So if everybody can start getting their, their pan or skillet warm, Shoot, yeah, I'm, I was on uh, mute. A big advice for the pan or skillet, it needs to be very, very hot uh, so it doesn't, the tortilla doesn't stick. Uh. Yeah. Do we need to put any oil? Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. No, no, no oil. <laughs> it just has to be warmed up. So definitely give a few minutes. I have to say that it's the first time I did a, a tortilla with my hand, just literally pressing, uh, but with the plastic sheet. Um, it's very beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Nice. So I was thinking it's true, like people that don't have a tortilla press, uh, how can they do tortillas at home? It's not that difficult. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't have a press or even a or even a rolling pin, actually, another way to have fun doing this is just pressing it like this, and you just keep turning and pressing. using a wine bottle you could also use a wine bottle <laughs> yeah <laughs> just uh, get crazy to, like, <laughs> having fun with this this is another fun way of using your hands that's what I, one of the ways i learned from my aunt and you get a tortilla as well so, so there's multiple ways yes your hands wine bottles rolling pins tortilla <laughs> press <laughs> the options are endless Exactly. Can we put it in the pan yet? Yes. Once it's been warmed up enough, um, I didn't explain, but I assume it's kind of self-evident how to peel it off. But if it's not, this is what you take off one sheet first. The top sheet is always really easy. And then the second sheet, you want to roll it off so that you keep the tortilla intact and then to throw a tortilla on sorry again if this is poor um, image but to throw a tortilla on I took it off the plastic and I have pretty much half my hand on the masa and I'm gonna throw it on like this in a very uh, kind of soft elegant way soft and kind yeah. Did everybody see that? <laughs> Ooh, it made a sizzle noise. Exactly. Very satisfying. Mine too, so satisfying. And it is very delicate and beautiful. <laughs> so it's only gonna be on here for, um, I would say tops like 30 seconds. Mine's already starting to get a, uh, 
like cooked around the edges, once you can visually see that it's cooked around the edges, that means it's already ready to, to flip. Um, sorry, I should have said this. I'm so used to flipping it with my hands, but if you have, if you use a spatula, it's probably better. So with a spatula, you would scoop it and flip it, but you can also use your hands and watch. I just flip it like this, done. And you can see Careful. that. Careful, you may, you may burn your fingers because if you're not very used to have your fingers close to the pan. <laughs> yeah, sorry I didn't put that in the um, necessary tools, but I uh, hope people have a spatula. Yes, everyone has something at home. Yeah. Otherwise, just use a spoon or something. Yeah. yeah, so once you did that flip, then you notice that it got very, like it's nicely cooked on that side. And we're leaving it here for like another 30 seconds. And is everybody doing okay with their tortillas? I'm still waiting for it to warm up. I had to do mine a couple times. <laughs> I'll do this again one or two times. I have to say that even when I have several years doing tortillas. <laughs> Did you get a cracker? Oh, looks like a Pac-Man. I, <laughs> I, I have a Pac-Man. <laughs> when, when I was placing the tortilla on the palm, it split, it just fell down and yeah. But anyway, it will be tasty. <laughs> So this is important. Uh, I let this go a little bit longer than I should have, but then you want to flip it one last time. And here is where tortillas uh, sometimes inflate. Oh, mine is inflating. Yeah, mine is too. If you guys can see this, mine's starting to bubble up. Can you guys Did see this? Water? Yeah, it's pretty. Wait, Ivan, say something. Yep. So yeah, some of them puff up a lot, but this one kind of puff, puffed up. And a good, and tortilla, want it to puff. a good tortilla always puffs up. I was going to say that. <laughs> In Mexico, it's like uh, super special that your tortilla pop up. <laughs> wow, Adriana! <laughs> and then once you get the hang of this and you're making a bunch of these for you or your partner or your family, Basically, you turn into an assembly line. You just press, cook, and throw them into, in Mexico, we use these tortilleros, like light, nice little woven baskets. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. When you taste it. <laughs> I usually wrap mine in just like a clean dishcloth, and I kind of moist, like I dampen it a little bit. Yep, that's fine. So, I am going to make another one from scratch. When did you say it was time to flip? Like when the edges are brown, did you say, or what? Yeah. Yeah. When okay. the edges start to become cooked, flip. You're good to go. All right. So Here we go, Jen. Okay. Oh, nice. Just, just eating, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna make number two. Adriana, how are you doing over there? I am so good. This smells so amazing. I can't wait to eat. I already have my filling ready to go. Oh, oh me too. God. I am oh. on my second. Nice. Just ready for lunch time. <laughs> Just perfect timing. Yeah. How are you doing, Sophie? Um, I'm good. Oh, my sound's still on. Um, yeah, I'm good. I think you said I have to sh should flip it back on the first side for a couple, a few seconds. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And that's when it'll that's when it'll puff, hopefully. Sometimes it doesn't pop, and it's fine. Anyway, it will be tasty. <laughs> we got some of the mama matcha yesterday as well, so I'm so oh, yeah. excited to try it. 
Maybe let's I say know. let's all get like three tortillas done, and then we can all um, communally eat 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 them or try them together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So I'm going for round two. I'm gonna say that for me, I have a little trick. No, I, like to, <laughs> I like to keep my tortillas on the skillet, on the pan, uh, because they are, I don't know, I, I just, it's a personal taste. I prefer to just lay them all together, one above the other one, so they don't uh, cool down. And when I'm done with all my tortillas, I'm just, I just have the the one at the bottom, very crunchy, very kind of a uh, toasty, and the rest they are still warm. So, and also because I don't have a nice uh, tortilla uh, tortillero, tortilla keeper, <laughs> like Ivan. So it's a good way to keep them warm. Ivan, yeah, you were you were saying that uh, the flour, the tortilla flour, doesn't have the same nutrients, or it's not as good as fresh tortilla uh, tor masa dough. Uh, yeah. Why? Um, the flour will tend to have <clears throat> preservatives added to it. And it's not the same as accessing fresh masa. Nice, Adriana. Um, I was gearing more. What I said, though, was I actually am not a fan of it for environmental and political reasons. The nutritional, eh, yeah, it's less tell, nutritional than the masa. Tell us more about the environmental and political issues. <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody's doing okay or if anybody needs to review anything. This is my second one. This is cool because this is how, I don't know, some of the, the back, back, um, back scenery that nobody gets to see. And it's fun, um, I don't know, fun techniques to develop. I never really get to share this with anybody. But this is how you want to let your tea off. Again, you're only covering like half the tortilla with your hands. And you just lay it out. Lay it out on the skillet. That is an art in itself. Yeah. <laughs> That's a skill. <laughs> yeah, we do. So we don't take it off the plastic, but we take it off the machine that presses it. And we do thousands of these a day, <laughs> just doing this kind of robotic movement. So I'm waiting to see the edges starting to cook slightly. And when they are ready, another test too, to know when it's ready to flip is the tortilla is slideable. When it's been cooked enough, you can slide it. Watch, see? So this means that it's not, not a, no longer like a fresh uh, hydrated dough. Now it's been cooked, you can slide it like a DJ. So now I'm flipping it. It's been cooked very nicely. And I'm leaving it here for like a good 30 seconds. And I'm not the best multitasker, Erika, multi-speaker. So I'll do this and then I'll <laughs> and then I'll talk a little bit about what I was getting into. <laughs> I could realize it. Oh my gosh, Sophie, show it to everyone. It's very cute. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna get ready for this to get flipped one last time. Everybody else doing okay with their tortillas? 
I am doing great. And we have some viewers watching on YouTube that are eating them already. They can't wait. <laughs> They're so good. Oh, sweet. <laughs> All right. One more time. <laughs> I'm going to play some cheese on my tortillas. So, this tortilla is slightly bubbling. I don't know if you guys can see it, it's a good angle. It's bubbling, I, I popping up, I can see it, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. At first, I wasn't sure if we were supposed to have the bubble, so I was like, oh no, but it's actually very satisfying to watch it bubble now. Yeah, and there you go, second one ready to go. Adriana, it's actually very special uh, that your tortilla is popping up. Like, I have never done a tortilla that pops up. And, what? <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, I feel very special then. I will really enjoy these now. Cool. Everybody done their two or three tortillas? I'm on four. <laughs> oh, sweet. Oops. Anybody have any questions about about this part, the pressing and cooking. I know I, I made it look maybe a little simple. I didn't see anybody struggle, which is great. But anybody, did everybody get the hang of it? Actually, I, I would like feedback because it kind of means a lot to understand if, if it made sense or not. It all, yeah. it all made sense, yeah. I'm just, had, I'm just struggling. <laughs> oh, Sophie, what's the, which part? Uh, it's the, the rolling out to make it like try and look pretty. I got the first one was good. Yeah. And, and third one are, I don't know. But anyway, I think it's just a practice thing. Don't flatten it too much. Okay. The same way that it's better to underhydrate than to overhydrate, at least at this stage, beginning and learning. Same, yeah. same thing, it's better to keep it thicker than to try to make it too thin. Like if, if okay. you feel it's too thick and you wanna thin thin it out more, maybe don't, because <laughs> thick, thick tortilla is fine. Okay, that's a good tip, because that'll be easier to pull it off as well. Exactly. Okay, thank yeah. you. Don't go for too thin. I feel it's, like my tortilla is a little bit thick. Yeah, everybody has a different, um, a different kind of, take on it. Uh, so it's funny in Mexico, tortillas are the thinnest out of the, the different um, countries that inherited tortilla culture. And when you go further south to <clears throat> El Salvador and Nicaragua and Guatemala, like all the Central American countries, they actually make their tortillas much thicker. Um, so yeah, it's also, I don't know, different takes. Um, but in Mexico, they've always out of all the countries, Mexico always kind of has the the want to make them thinner. Also because we eat them every day. So uh, mm. literally every day, three times a day, almost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think so do those countries. They make tortillas a lot, but they just like them thinner. We have a more vast kind of variety of what tortillas or what's done with tortillas too. So we use them every day, but in all kinds of dishes and. I, I want to share uh, another kind of variation for, for your tortilla. So if you put, you have your tortilla, you put a little bit of filling or cheese or whatever, and you fold it like a calzone, you get a quesadilla mm -hmm. and then you can just <laughs> yeah did you pinch the edges of that erica no well like is it i just closed? press it i just play okay. uh, like press it so it's close it's closing 
But I, I think uh, your, your way of explaining, Ivan, was very uh, enlightening. No. Well, it was very good, actually, uh, because um, I think uh, when you're talking to a Mexican, it's very simple to explain how to make tortillas. Yeah. But you were explaining it in how to make tortillas to someone that is not Mexican and someone that has never done tortillas before. So it was really good. Sophie, I, I saw you hold it up. Yeah, it's, I think it might be a buffalo. I don't know. <laughs> it works. I think if you were able to make that masa into anything that resembles an animal, you did a good job. <laughs> it, it's, it's fine. It's cooked. It's edible. It's great. Nyla, do you want this? <laughs> well, I also didn't get too far into, I wanted to focus on tortillas and I don't know, some other day we could make like a simple filling together. But, um, what is your favorite way to use tortilla, Ivan? You said there's um, multiple dishes and ways to use it. What's your favorite? Yeah, um, I guess I was getting at like there's just hundreds of taco styles that that you know that are done in Mexico and that are continuously developed outside of Mexico now. Um, there's like a bunch of things like, uh, dishes called enchiladas or, um, or, um, chilaquiles. Um, and then beyond tortillas, there's just a whole bunch of different ways to use masa that I won't get too much into right now, but there's a lot of dishes, um, that use masa that are not, um, are not tortilla oriented, even drinks. Um, but my personal, I like what I just mentioned, chilaquiles a lot. Um, that's a really cool dish. It's basically um, cutting up the tortillas once you've cooked them, frying them up a bit, and then uh, eating them with, I like eating them with eggs and salsa. Um, and in general, I like eating tortillas with eggs. I like egg tacos a lot. Those are one of my favorites. Yeah. Look at the Oh, wow. You got the best coffee. <laughs> yeah. I love it. You got it, Adriana. I'm so Good. excited. I'm going to make these all the time. This is going to be awesome for my household. <laughs> I gave a class at George Brown not too long ago, like a few months ago, um, for about 30 students who wanted to learn how to make a tortilla, and only one of them got it to puff. Wow, I feel really special. These are going to be, honestly, probably my favorite <laughs> tacos ever. Yeah, oh. only one of them got it to puff, even though I explained it and we all did it together. And it was really fun to see. Um, so kudos. Thank awesome. you. Um, anybody want to eat? I just have a little bit of simple beans and salsa. I can't share it with you, but I can show you. <laughs> can show it off. So I can show cool. off, but not share. <laughs> the salsa matcha. Oh my gosh, I love this salsa oh. so much. Yeah. I love salsa matcha. Oh, I love salsa matcha, and mm. Adriana call it mama matcha, and I love it. I love that name actually. <laughs> yeah, because Melissa's mother showed her how to make that. So does it like a like an ode for her mother? Oh, that's why it's called yeah. mama matcha. Oh. Yeah. But it's it sounds really like mama, mama Pacha too, or Pacha Mama. Yeah. <laughs> is everyone enjoying tortillas? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is everyone going to use as a filling today? I'm yeah, me. talk to me, everybody. <laughs> I'm literally eating it with salsa matcha and guacamole. Oh, <gasps> my gosh. <laughs> I'm so jealous. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm using just a very simple feeding that is cheese nice. with Mexican herbs. That's it. And ma of course, salsa matcha, mama matcha. <laughs> I, uh, I just made beans. I like beans a lot. And we have a lot from the farm. Um, 
Well, cheers, everybody. Cheers, I'm so excited. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking for all the things in my fridge to like anything as a vehicle to eat it. <laughs> it's so good. Another popular way is just sprinkling a bit of salt on the tortilla. Um, I like I like just the taste of the corn tortilla itself because this is very unique. Um, it, I would say it's pretty difficult to find this kind of product in Toronto besides ours. Um, in Mexico, it's a little bit easier. But um, oh, nice! You got a heart. Show it to everyone, Sophie. It's very lovely. <laughs> well done. A lot of people, some people that come into the tortilleria, I think when we did um, when we did the brunch session too, and we tried the tortillas on the spot, um, it's just a common thing. You sprinkle a bit of salt on the tortilla. I think Mexico, uh, unfortunately, and much of the world has an addiction to salt. Um, so uh, I actually don't always endorse salt either. I like to endorse plate savoring this flavor this is you know this is uh sacred it is a, it's an amazing flavor and it's one of the reasons i love them so much i love that corn flavor it's amazing i've never really tasted anything like this it's fantastic does anybody um kind of it's hard to explain i'm also not a connoisseur um I, I like the idea of, of knowing how to describe flavors and and you know taste notes and stuff like that, but I have no experience with that, so I'm a poor describer. But anybody here kind of tell the difference almost of what it what it is to eat the tortilla just made from the masa as opposed to buying the tortillas? Does anybody like feel some kind of difference or taste the difference? Or just or want to describe what they what they think or feel for me it's a quite a difference I fresh um, and the flavors are just popping mine not a lot because it's <laughs> flour <laughs> but uh, I, I just remember in Mexico um, uh, we, we value a lot the the, the tortillas that women are just making um, next to you and it's just oh my gosh uh, you made me remember that uh, experience um, Ivan and I'm just gonna go next weekend to buy masa from you <laughs> just to make it happen I was just gonna say like, whenever we grab um whenever we come and pick up tortilla, it's so fresh. And I think we had talked about this before, Lynn and Tony, but it's so hard not to get in the car or leave, leave after picking it up and just start eating them right away. They're so soft and delicious, but making them fresh at home with the masa is a whole new level, right? And like I said, I kind of like them a little bit thicker. So I made mine a little bit thicker than usual. And so that also adds a level of like specialness, I think for me to be able yep. to make them myself. Yeah. Very cool. I forgot <clears throat> that I made these the other day, but if you really wanted to get professional, um, another thing you can make with masa are tamales. Has anybody here had tamales before? I have. Can we have a tamales making party next time? With with yeah. the tortilla making party, just like an everything making party. I want yeah, <laughs> the tamales one would definitely take longer. <laughs> Probably. I'm with Tony would, though. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, me too. I would almost want to do that one when COVID is over and do it in person. That'd be a lot more fun. All right, down. That would be so much fun. Super in. Yeah, that one would probably even be more worth it in person and a little bit more challenging to do over the over video. But it'd also be just a 
an excuse to look forward to doing something with human contact. <laughs> And they're so delicious. I think I hadn't had a tamale in a really long time. And then I had them when you brought them to Green Sunday. Yeah. And I fell in love with them again. They are so delicious. Yeah. So yeah, tamal is just, mm. is just the masa wrapped in the corn husk leaf. So these leaves, are what come off of the corn cob. Basically, this is cool because like Erika was saying, this is what I get to see a lot of and I'm actually thinking a lot about planting right right now because the sun came out and um, plant corn right now in, in May. So I'm getting ready to plant. But basically when you have the, the corn plant on the stock, the cob is covered with this leaf. So right now the way you see this is I pulled back the leaf and these leaves, you hydrate them and you wrap the masa in the leaves and you steam them. And that is essentially what a tamal is. Mm. Mm, and it's super tasty. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. I did one. Sorry? Please. From you, um, back between that is heaven and earth, <laughs> which is amazing, and also recommended using um, some honey on your tortilla, like having it with honey. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Nice little sweet kick. Oh wow! I want. I want to try it. I have never tried. I never thought about it. Wow. Is there a sweet variation that's traditional? Like, is there a way to make tortilla like sweet that's very common? In Mexico? Um, tamales are made sweet. Tamales with tortillas? Like, do you, do, you rem do you recall any taco or feeling that is sweet? No. Uh, yeah, no. I think it's very creative, uh, Adriana. <clears throat> no. But I w I'm going to try it. <laughs> Okay, how how is everyone uh, doing? I I want to be ma mindful of everyone's time. It's already twelve ten. Yep. I'm just enjoying my delicious tacos right now. What about <laughs> what about the other folks? Um, Dana and looks so the, good. the Nike. Is everybody else making tortillas and doing good? Yeah. Naiki, share your tortillas with us. Huh? Was How so was your process? Here we go, unmute, there we go. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, I liked it. It just reminds me that uh, I used to do this when I was younger, but I forgot how to actually knead it. So yesterday I was excited when I picked it up from Lynn, the masa, because I was like, okay, I'm about to do it from, from scratch. So yeah, this brought back many memories actually. <laughs> and I ate my guac from yesterday, so <laughs> it was so tempting. Mm -hmm. I don't have, um, I have some beans, so I might use that. We ate our guac yesterday too. <laughs> I was hoping that when we were going to have the discipline to save it for today. No bueno. <laughs> no. The totopos and the guac were gone right away. As soon as we got home, I was like, here, Gary, here's a plate. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> nice. It actually tasted kind of like ceviche. Yes. I don't know. What do you put in it? The guacamole? Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Maybe it's a bit. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> we just put a bit of cilantro and thyme, a bit of chile, a bit of onion, and a bit of tomato. Nothing too out there. That's funny if it tastes like because ceviche is more fish. But I was thinking that maybe it's because actually. Well, the Mexican ceviche, <laughs> it has also lime, uh, cilantro, uh, those ingredients, but the um, avocado. So maybe the, the onion gave you a little bit of hints. Maybe, yeah. 
Anybody have other comments or any questions about what we just went over in this past hour uh, or feedback? I have a question. Yeah. So this masa dough is literally just ground up corn? Like there's nothing else in there? Yeah. And yeah, just like a bit of water. And when we boil the corn again, we add a little bit of this mm. lime. And that's it. But it's just the ground up corn. It tastes Pretty so good. fresh. Yeah. Well, yeah, how do we store tortillas? Like what's a good way to keep them fresh longer? Or like, cause I know a lot of times they, get, they either get moldy and go bad or they get hard. <laughs> the tortillas? Mm. I, I like to put them on the freezer, uh, freezer, yeah. And uh, every time I I gonna cook them again, I place them, um, I sink them in water for so, for a minute, and then I put them on the skillet or or in the pan, and they become again as fresh tortillas. Ooh, okay. Like you soak them in water, like in a bag or in like in a container. Uh, in a bowl. In a bowl. I put water in a bowl and I put the tortillas. So I, oh, I that's what I do with your tortillas, Ivan. <laughs> yep. Yeah, freezing them. I, in a uh, freezing them or keeping them in a in a bag or an airtight lid. But uh, but yeah, that's if you're gonna use them in the next like five days. If you're not using and in the fridge. Um, otherwise, yeah, because these have no preservatives. If you leave them out, um, if you don't have them well sealed, and they can both do what <laughs> what Lynn said, dry or mold. One guy that came to buy them, his feedback was really funny because he came back, got tortillas, he came back and he's like, your tortillas molded on me. And, he's, and then he was like, I love it. He's like, <laughs> He's like it's real, real food. Real food supposed supposed to do that. Mm. He's like, it's my fault. I he's never like, thought about it. That yeah, because if you go into like a some of the Latin stores, like I go to one at Dufferin and Bloor, sometimes I try not to. Um, and you see tortillas on their shelves that last months, which is not natural. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, it's almost like eating natural as opposed to eating unnatural. Um, we're just, I don't even, I wouldn't even call this an alternative. We're just one, one way or one, you know, pluriverse um, out there. One thing I brought up with the, the lady I spoke who interviewed us in the Netherlands the other day was, yesterday was, um, you know, food, food is kind of everybody, everybody has their own perception of even what food is, um, like how you, how you attain it, how you access it, how you eat, what you eat. Um, you know, some people grow it, some people buy it. Um, yeah, food is very interesting. And it's something, it's, it's funny and it's interesting because it's, it's like water and it's like oxygen where we need it every day except we get to choose. Like we're not choosing different kinds of oxygen or we're not, uh, well, we're kind of sometimes choosing different waters. We shouldn't be using <laughs> <laughs> different brands of water um, sometimes. But food is, you know, it can be as custom really as you, it can be a pill packed with, you know, packed with uh, all kinds of nutrients made in a lab or it could be, you know, veggies that came out of your garden or it could be, sushi or takeout from your favorite restaurant. So food food is very moldable kind of in your mind. It could be maseka, flour maseka, or it could be masa, like the one that we grind. So yeah, we're kind of just one option out there. But I'm happy, proud to be supplying this out, out there mm. in Toronto at least. I was going to say that, uh, Ivan, that uh... Uh, I am very grateful to have um, my style as an option in, in the city. And it's the first time uh, living abroad in six years 
that I find um, that even better tortillas that I could find in Mexico. Mm. Because in Mexico, even the tortillerias are starting to use uh, maseca. Mm -hmm. And you can taste the difference until you taste uh, real food and uh, organic food. And you remember that, yeah, food and vegetables have a wonderful taste. <laughs> yeah. We just forgot uh, the taste because we are eating industrialized food. <laughs> well, hey, I have to I, yes, thank you for sharing, Yvonne. This was so lovely, and I just had a beautiful lunch. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna do a lightning round today? Ooh. What's that? There's fun. That's where uh, we ask fun questions and you get to tell us the answers. Usually we prepare. Let's see. I'm gonna do this off the top of our heads. <laughs> Anyone can jump in with questions because I don't have them prepared in my mind. Let's see. Um, okay. <clears throat> Burrito or taco? I'm sorry, it's for Ivan. <laughs> but it was just like a Mexican will tell you straight away. Well, it's better if I let Ivan respond. Sorry, we all, we all have to choose one out of your two questions? You just, you're you going to choose one answer out of the two oh, questions. me. Okay. Uh, taco. Is burrito uh, even Mexican? Is that just something we made up as Canadians? Uh, I don't know so much about the burrito. I, I'm pretty sure I, I learned later that they do have it in some parts of Mexico. In the northern part of Mexico? Yeah, but then I don't know if it originated in Mexico or if it's more from southern U.S. or I'm not actually <laughs> sure. But I like tacos more. I'm not, it's more because I'm not so familiar with burritos. Fair. Um, I've heard good things about them. <laughs> well, good. Maybe next time we can explore burritos. I think um, I do. Burritos would be cool if somebody made them with like really good beans and really good cheese. Cause usually I, I hear that they're made with like just, you know, crappy beans, like uh, I think cheddar they cheese. They generalized Sorry. to all foods in North America that they could be better than they are if one just used ingredients that were delicious and fresh. Yeah. fresh and local. <laughs> yeah, all of the above. <laughs> um, Ivan, beach or mountains? Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is that, not supposed to be like deep. Soul yeah, stuff. I choose beach, but not not by much. <laughs> you uh, can take both, I suppose. Yeah, I like them both. I spend probably more time in the mountains, um, but I like beach a lot, definitely. Nice. City Thanks. or farm? Farm. Yeah. Hmm. Main course or dessert? Dessert. Dessert. Um, main course. I don't. I don't eat much dessert actually. Not a dessert guy. <laughs> okay, singing or dancing? Dancing. Coffee. Okay. Sorry. Coffee or tea? Coffee. I'm going to jump in. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Um, huh. You already have it. You make amazing tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could have another one, what would it be? Um, oh, tough question. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but Flying would be cool, I guess. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Absolutely. Okay, one more. Guilty pleasure. Um, guilty pleasure, that is like something that you, you shouldn't be having, but you like, right? Basically. Yeah. Um, but you love having so much that you forget <laughs> the guilty. Uh, um... Hmm. I really like mezcal, like a lot of people nowadays, um, which is similar to tequila. 
So that's a that's one. Yeah, that's a guilty pleasure. Food wise, I don't eat a lot of junk food or or too many things I shouldn't be eating. And drink wise, <laughs> kind of the same. So yeah, maybe mezcal, maybe more on the alcohol side. <laughs> <laughs> I have never tried mezcal. Oh. But actually, mezcal and tequila are very healthy, Ivan. Are they? Yeah. Are they yeah. though? Yes, they are one of the hard alcohols that has the least amount of sugar. Um, so maybe it's also my mind trying to <laughs> trying to justify the tequila. Judy's <laughs> doctor hat coming on. She's like, really? Not good. I'm not sure. <laughs> are you sure it's healthy? <laughs> I'm gonna do a research and next episode. I'm gonna. Let in you small know. doses. Okay. Small doses it. also, I guess. <laughs> as long as you're over 18, not pregnant, and not having yes, like so. shots. Shots, 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 right? <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, it was a lovely episode. Uh, thank you very much for ev uh, everyone joining today in YouTube. Uh, yeah, here with us on, on Zoom and all of you that will watch us uh, later on. So share this episode with your friends that will love to, to know how to make tortillas and all the stories behind tortillas. And uh, see you next week. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. And if you want to get your own masa, guys, Maisal, at MaisalTO is where you can order it online or at, on Instagram. So yep. do that too. And what's your, it's tortillas at mysal.com, right? For your email? Mysal.ca. .ca, sorry. So you can also order yep. it there. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ivan. This was great. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for your time and knowledge. Thank you, Ivan. Yeah, thanks everybody. Have a nice <laughs> rest of the day. You too. Bye-bye, Janaki. Bye-bye, Dinah. Mm-hmm. <laughs>